Hi, I'm Brian Grise with Edge Technologies. In this bar loader installation instruction, I'm going to describe how to decide where to position a bar loader relative to a lathe. This is going to be for multiple applications, including sliding headstock and fixed headstock uh, using visuals and uh, additional description. There are three measurements that we need to consider when we're uh, determining the position of a bar loader. And uh, all three of these need to be successfully met. All three of these conditions need to be successfully met at the same time. Uh, we cannot sacrifice one for another. We have to meet all three conditions at the same time. First being the length of the nose. Um, the nose in a sliding headstock application expands and collapses, and we need to be able to fit the collapsed nose in between the lathe headstock and the bar feeder clamp, as well as any other adaptation components uh, or movable anti-vibration device, any other components uh, that are included there as well. Um, or in a hard nose application, obviously, the nose is a fixed length. Uh, can sometimes be trimmed shorter, um, but that uh, that nose also needs to fit in between the bar feeder and the lathe. So that's the first measurement uh, that we need to make sure that we have a sufficient distance to fit to fit the nose in position. Uh, the second measurement that we need to accommodate for is the reach of the pusher. Um, this pusher reach how far it sticks out of the front of the bar loader is determined by the bar feed model as well as any other options that are included on that bar feeder, potentially uh, an extended pusher kit that may have been installed. Um, that length would be easily measured just by extending the pusher to its forward limit, uh, forward reach, sticking out of the front of the bar feeder and taking a measurement of that distance. And then the third measurement that we need to consider is a uh, distance from the bar gripper or remnant gripper in the bar feeder to the main spindle collet. And this is a minimum distance that has to be equivalent to the length of one full bar at minimum. Um, so this distance would be roughly six inches larger than the bar length capacity of the bar feeder. Uh, so for example, if it's a 12 foot bar machine, it would be roughly 12 foot six inches minimum from the gripper to the main spindle collet. And we'll go over all three of these uh, measurements in more detail below one at a time. Um, but just to reiterate the importance of all three of these measurements, must be within uh, within their tolerance position at the same time. We cannot sacrifice one for another. So if we can't meet one in order in because of another, we have to make adjustments. And we'll touch on that a little bit uh, as well in the detailed descriptions. <clears throat> So these three measurements, one at a time, the nose length is typically where we start when we do an installation. So we measure the collapsed length of the nose if it's a telescopic nose sliding headstock application. If this is a fixed headstock application, the nose is a fixed length. However, it can be cut to fit into um, the distance that we need if necessary. Also on a sliding headstock application, the length of the telescopic nose can also be cut in some cases, but not always. So we need to have the minimum length of the nose measured plus a small uh, safety length so that we don't crush the nose completely. So roughly a quarter inch to a half inch greater than the collapsed length of the nose is my measurement so that that nose can fit 
in between the adaptation at the back of the main spindle and the mounting clamp or mounting bracket at the front of the bar feeder. Okay. Also, being aware that in a sliding headstock application, the main Z axis obviously moves. And we want to make sure we have the Z axis at its rearmost limit position. In most cases, that's the negative Z over travel. However, some lathes, um, the rear position is actually the positive limit. So watch that. Make sure you're physically at the rearmost limit position with the main headstock when you take this measurement. So we're going to measure the collapsed length of the nose. For example, if it were eight inches in this example, add an extra quarter inch to a half inch, and we're at roughly eight and a quarter to eight and a half inches from the front of the nose clamp on the bar feeder to the back of the lathe spindle adapter. That's the first measurement. Also, while we're considering the distance required to fit the nose, uh, we also have to consider uh, any other options that may be present on this particular machine, such as uh, a movable anti-vibration device, which is common for a sliding headstock application. Um, there are, are some other components that may uh, be involved here on a fixed headstock application. There may be a collection device at the end of a hard nose that needs to be installed as well. Um, any options like this need to be considered for the um, additional distance needed to fit these options in. Um, the best way to go about that is to install that component to the spindle adaptation prior to uh, determining the distance needed for the nose. Um, but if they're not installed, at least you need to be sure that you accommodate for the extra space needed. So make sure what options you have and what needs to be installed there as you're calculating this distance. Second measurement we're going to use is the length of the pusher. Again, this maximum reach of the pusher varies by bar feed model, and it also varies depending on whether or not the specific bar feeder has a, an extended pusher option installed. Um, so it's always best to, even if you find this measurement in the operator manual, manual of the bar feeder, it's always good to double check it. Actually extend the pusher out of the bar feeder as far as it will go and measure that length so you know what the reach of that pusher is. And our goal is to make sure that we're able to, within that maximum reach of the pusher, we're able to reach the back of the main spindle collet, this time with the main spindle at its front limit position. So we're going to jog in a, in a sliding head application. We're going to jog that main spindle all the way to its forward over travel position. And we want to be able to make sure that we can reach to the back of that main spindle collet with the pusher collet at the maximum forward limit position of the z-axis and we must position the loader close enough that the pusher reaches the back of that main spindle collet in that in that situation if it doesn't we need to get closer here's what a typical fmb operator manual will look like where it shows you the maximum reach of the pusher based on specific machine models and options. If the bar feeder is positioned too far away and this pusher cannot reach the back of this main spindle collet, we wind up with excessive remnant, which is waste, which is something that we fight every day. We try to eliminate this waste and make sure that we position this bar feeder close enough so that we can reach all the way to the back of that main spindle collet 
and eliminate that excess remnant. The third measurement that we have to account for is the distance from the material gripper inside the bar feeder. It's roughly in this location. That's what grips and holds the bar as the, as the bar feed collet presses on to the back of the bar. The measured distance from these grippers to the main spindle collet typically set about three inches in a sliding head application, typically set about three inches back from its for forward limit position because that would be where it would be located during a bar change. We want to have a minimum distance of, in a 12 foot bar application, a minimum distance of 12 foot six inches. In a six foot bar application, it would be six foot six inches or in an eight foot, it would be eight foot six inches. It's six inches longer than the capacity length of the bar feeder. So each bar feeder has a length capacity of material that it was designed for. We need to be able to accommodate that, the full length of that bar plus six inches, okay? If we're too close to the lathe in this situation, we wind up where during what we call pre-feed, if the bar reaches the main spindle collet during pre-feed, a couple things can happen. One is that it can hang up on the back of the collet and not be able to go through it. And another is that it won't position correctly um, once, once we press on to the main pusher, if we're even able to do that, um, we'll be too far forward and already beyond our, what we call facing or top cut or first insert position. So we have to have that minimum distance so that that full bar length can be pre-fed, prepared or in a position ready to load on to the pusher collet and not having reached the main spindle collet yet. So those are the three main measurements. And again, to, to reiterate, all three of them have to work at the same time. So we have to double check all three as we're moving, positioning the bar feeder. So maybe we have to move it back to fit the telescopic nose. Maybe we have to move it forward a little bit to be able to reach the back of the main spindle collet. And then we have to check and make sure that our bar is able to be prefed without reaching the main spindle collet. If any of these don't work, we, we have to um, take a step back and figure out how we can overcome that. Uh, in some cases, I mentioned we can cut the length of the nose. So if we need to get closer to the lathe because of pusher reach issues, um, we can potentially, in some cases, cut the length of the telescopic nose or in a fixed headstock application, we can cut the hard nose. Um, if we're too close and we need to back up, <clears throat> then we hope that the pusher can reach. If it can't, if we position relative to the nose position and or this um, bar loading distance uh, and the pusher is unable to reach the main spindle collet from that location, we need to increase the length of the pusher. So in that case, we need to add an extended pusher option to that machine. So these are the scenarios that we, you know, that we need to be able to, to overcome, but we need to uh, ensure what scenario we have first. After we've gone through those three primary measurements, uh, we have a few additional variables that we need to consider as well. We need to consider um, lathe sheet metal uh, relative to our positioning. And a lot of us, particularly sliding headstock machines, have, uh, have a non-guide bushing mode option nowadays. And this requires the bar loader to include an axial shift device which slides the bar feeder forward and back as the lathe converts between guide bushing and non-guide bushing mode. So we need to be able to 
axial shift the bar feeder the full length of the shift without crashing into the lathe sheet metal. So that's another position that we need to watch out for as we're setting our location of the bar feeder relative to the lathe. So we need to know what the axial shift length is for this bar feeder for this particular application and make sure we have that distance between the lathe sheet metal and the front of the bar feeder. Because if we don't, we're going to wind up in a scenario where when the operator tries to axial shift to shift into nod and guide bushing, the bar feeder is going to crash into the lathe sheet metal, which is obviously not a good thing to have happen. <clears throat> Additionally, we need to keep our eye on uh, the non guide bushing or chucker mode to make sure that, let's say, I position this bar feed and my pusher reaches when I'm in when I'm in Swiss mode, I need to make sure that it also reaches when I'm in chucker mode. Now, on paper, in theory, the length of the bar feed axial shift should be roughly equal to the difference between front limit Swiss and front limit chucker, whatever this difference is. Let's say just for example, we use a figure of nine inches. So there's a nine inch difference between the front limit in chucker and the front limit in Swiss. If that's nine inches, the axial shift length of the bar feeder should be roughly nine inches as well. That way when the operator takes the guide bushing out and changes the lathe over into chucker mode, the bar feeder also shifts forward the exact same length and we have the same relative position of the pusher reaching to the back of the main spindle collet and that'll look like this. Now we have a bar feeder that's axial shifted forward and you can see it's shifted forward the same amount as the difference between the Swiss mode and the chucker mode and my pusher still reaches the back of the main spindle collet. But that's a measurement that we also have to double check as we're doing an install and make sure that this shift length either is roughly equal to the lathe shift length or make sure that I have the reach in my pusher to be able to reach the back of the main spindle collet when the lathe shifts over into chucker mode. I hope this presentation has helped you to have a better, more clear understanding of precisely how to locate a bar feeder relative to a lathe and be more successful in bar feed installs. I'm Brian Grise with Edge Technologies and this is Bar Feeder Installation.